Springtime here in the Mojave Desert is my favorite time of the year, just because you see a lot of colors. The desert really comes to life. It pops with colors, it pops with greenery. It's pleasant, 70 degrees, 80 degrees. You're coming out and seeing these plants that for just a month, maybe a few weeks of the year, are able to put on some pretty spectacular blooms. One of my favorite wildflowers out here is one of the first flowers that you get to see, and it's the Western Redbud or California Redbud that pops usually late February, early March, and the whole trees or shrubs just pop with these beautiful purplish flowers that last for quite a while, almost until Easter. Um, so it's one of my favorites just because of the size and scale and just the, the eye-catching beauty of that flower. Um, so Redbud's definitely one of my favorites. What we have here is something called Utah penstemon. It's a type of perennial that pops up these beautiful flowers on these stalks right here. Uh, main pollinator for these plants happens to be hummingbirds. You'll see them flutter and hover and stick their long beaks into these flowers and essentially get that nectar and pollen out of there and go from penstemon to penstemon bush, one of our more pretty and vibrant flowers here in Red Rock Canyon. So we are here in Calico Basin. This particular spot is Calico Spring. Uh, you can see a little bit of seepage of water coming through the area. That's what allows all the greenery, the trees to grow here. Um, in particular, we're seeing a lot of grasses today. And one of my favorites, as far as wildflowers go, is this pretty shooting star right here. Just a beautiful purple color, gold down on the bottom and you can see the flower is almost facing downward like a columbine and the pollinators will come from this side and get into the pollen and nectar. Joshua trees are an interesting plant here in the Mojave Desert. They're endemic to the area, meaning that they only grow within the Mojave Desert and nowhere else in the world. Here at Red Rock Canyon, our Joshua trees can get up to about 10, 15 feet tall. Elsewhere, you'll see them get up to about 30 or 40 feet tall. They're a slow growing plant, maybe a couple of inches per year. So when you look at a Joshua tree and if it's 10, 15 feet tall, you're looking at a plant that's been around for at least 100 years or more. So they're, they're kind of neat in that sense. They're not truly trees. They're yucca plants that are actually related to asparagus. The flowers when pollinated to turn into fruits and they're little almost miniature watermelon fruits is how I think of them. They'll green up during the spring and then in the summertime turn brown kind of fall apart and inside are a bunch of black seeds and the mice and rats will go around dispersing them and uh, hopefully creating new Joshua trees. Right over here we've got some beautiful globe mallow flowers. You can see the bright orange color that the flower petals have here. Additionally, this is one we call sori. That's the second name for it. If you actually touch the plant itself, they've got little fine hairs that help reflect sunlight um, to cool the plant down. And if you go and you touch your eye after actually touching the plant, you end up with a sori. So enjoy the globe mallow, but definitely don't touch. Right here, we've got a beautiful beaver tail cactus. You can see the awesome blooms in display here. These blooms will open up in the morning time as we get towards midday, really open up to attract pollinators, and then towards the evening, close up to protect themselves overnight. This cactus, although you can't see many spines on it, has very tiny microscopic spines. So if you actually were to touch this, it would hurt a lot. As you can see, sometimes beaver tails will have little bite marks taken out of them. Additionally, the fruits themselves are a great little sugar high for some of our ground animals like our desert tortoises, our ground squirrels, and in addition to some deer and bighorn sheep. We often are able to find beaver tail in some of the most arid and hottest regions. It's able to use any type of um, resource it can. When we have rains here at Red Rock Canyon, it'll grow temporary roots to soak up that moisture. And then by the time it dries up, it'll cut off those roots and uh, use pretty much every little ounce of water it can. The spines also help protect it from other animals looking to grab water out of the plant. 
Right here we've got a beautiful staggering mariposa lily that's growing actually in a thick of black brush right here. These mariposa lilies will pop up and use the black brush as a way to kind of wind itself up and actually um, use it as a support system. The advantage is being able to use the plant as protection. So anything that's looking to munch flowers will have a hard time getting into this through the really sharp and pointy black brush. So that's what we see here. The beautiful color patterns within the flower attract a lot of bees and it gets the name mariposa, which is Spanish for butterfly. So often we see a lot of butterflies that will come by and pollinate these beautiful flowers. Conservation is important, uh, one, so people have a chance to come out here and enjoy this beauty. We want to conserve the plants, we want to conserve the animals, we want to conserve the resources so us and future generations have a chance to enjoy this. Second, we want to conserve the biodiversity of the area too. We want to make sure that you know it's a healthy ecosystem, that, the, that there's enough plants for the animals and that the animals are doing a good job of dispersing seeds for the plants. When you come out to Red Rock Canyon, you're often stunned by the rocks, you're stunned by the plants, the animals, just the blue sky, the, the, the wildness of the place. And conservation helps allow us to not only enjoy that beauty, but also give it to future generations as well and make sure that people that come after us have a chance to enjoy the beauty. And it's really a, a gift for all of us here to enjoy this public land and hopefully continue to enjoy the public land in, in the future.